Okay, Victor Momo from Excel Moments here with a continuation on the series of formula breakdowns to Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. Like I've said in previous videos, if you are not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, you should if you want to boost your Excel formula game. Now to the challenge at hand, which is challenge 30. Let's see. We have some cities and we have an expected answer. So how do we get to these expected answers? Let's read what we have in the call out. It says provide a formula to list the alphabets that are repeated in given cities. So if the city is Tokyo, okay, O is repeated. So we need O there. If it's Frankfurt, you have F and R repeated. So you need those two. Okay, so I think easy enough, right? Well, easy enough in terms of the problem definition, not the solution. Okay, so you look at, um, you know, the text and then you look at the characters that appear more than once. Okay, and then you want to bring them together. Okay, so um, there are always a couple of ways to do it. The first thing is, of course, to break it apart, break each of those strings into individual elements. Then you can get a unique list. When you get a unique list, you can then do a count. See how many times each of these characters appear anyone that appears more than once um you know obviously has a duplicate and you want it listed but there's an interesting approach i saw by i think it's john gyro and that probably may you know add the formula construct um while editing the video you know and it's it's really interesting i don't remember it character by character but i remember the logic of it so maybe i may just you know kind of try to demonstrate that in this Video. So let me start up first, and I would want to use this um, rule, this Hong Kong rule. The reason I want to use Hong Kong is because I don't want to use a rule where you know it's not going to return anything. I want to see what's going on with my formula. So I probably would want to start with one that shows you know a couple of things, right? So that at every step I know that I'm making sense. So first of all, I will break it apart to get the individual characters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do mid. You most likely are familiar with these constructs now. You need a sequence of numbers, so which is sequence, you know, and use the length of the string so that it can be one, two, three, all the way to the length, and to then pick one character from every position. So for character one, pick one, character two, pick one, three, pick one, so that way at least one, two, three for you all the way to the end. Okay? Now, this is, you know, everything broken down into different cells. So this is how John approaches it, which is extremely creative. So he uses a match, first of all, or an X match. What would X match tell you? Tell you the position, you know, where that character is found. The first position, you remember, just like the VLOOKUP and match and X match, they tell you the first position where it is found. So X match of this within itself. Okay, so you are searching for it within itself now. You can see, yes, H is found in number 1, O in 2, but when you come down, you see that there are still some characters that are found in 2, 3, 4, right? So for O, which is like the 8th character or something, 4, 5, okay, 7, like the 7th character to be found in position 2, what does that mean? It means that it's a duplicate because ideally it should have been found in the position where it is if it's the first time it's occurring, if that makes sense to you, right? So this should have been found in position 7, this in 8, and this in 9. For them to be showing two, three, four, it means that they occur earlier than where they are. So it means that they have duplicates. So what John then does is he creates a sequence here, you know, of numbers, which is the sequence you expect, right? Logic is absolutely brilliant, you know. And then he then compares these two. Okay, so he compares these two. So everywhere you have false, so it means that, yes, those guys are off their position. Meaning that even though they are in position 7, they are found somewhere earlier. So the only way they can be found somewhere earlier, it means that that character already appears. So what they are interested in from this list are the guys who are false. If you make this uh, another G, okay, you can see that, yes, it adds another G. It's also false. So what it means is I, I need to extract these four that are false, right, and then I can do unique on it so that I can get the unique list. So that's kind of the logic of what, you know, John did. And that's what we are going to apply. Makes a lot of sense. You know, it's just different from every other way. I think people approach it. I would have even approached it myself. Um, so I know I'm going to use some things a few times. So let me start off redefining variables again. I know some people also note this, you know, when I use sequence, len of A8, you see constructs like this 
online a lot of times you see row 1 to 99 people do stuff like that you know but different approaches but just the same but i prefer to use maybe the sequence so that i'm not having a string of you know 99 when i only need 10 so it's up to you this is just to say oh we're assuming that we'll not have more than 99 characters but i rather use you know um, sequence length of the string okay that's just you know for you to know all right so now if a is this so let me create another variable b which would be going character by character so it's going to be meet this time a8 instead of putting the sequence thing that i put before i've already defined that as a variable a so this is just going to be meet a8 a comma one i'm doing exactly the same thing as i did before just with variables so now let me spit out b which is the same thing we should get the same result okay so the same result so that's it so that's where we are so this is what our b looks like so at this stage let us do the x match you know matching this result against itself to see what we get okay so we do x match of b against itself trying to say for all the characters in b in what position would you find them in the same b okay so we close one bracket for the let right and this is what we have so now we will compare this to the sequence of numbers anyone that gives us a false is you know out of position so we compare these to the sequence of numbers and we've already created a variable there which is a okay so we are comparing these to one two three four five to the length of the string so let's close the bracket so do you see we can see the false is that we have you know there okay so at, at this stage you know you can you can proceed in different ways I think John there may have used, you know, like an if, you know, I may use, you know, for example, as in you could choose to use maybe a filter, you know, in some in some way. So it's it's all dependent on, you know, how you choose to approach it. So what use a filter, you could use an if. So what you did here is, okay, fine, you could use, say, an if, you know. So if this is true, right, it means that if this is true, it is found in the position that it's found, you are not interested in it really because it means that, you know those are not the duplicates the duplicates are the ones that you want the false that you have there so if it is found where it's supposed to be found you could just say okay give me an empty string then if not what do you want me to show there i want you to show me you know the character itself so where are the characters the characters are what we have in b because b is what gives us those h o n g hong kong so we say if this is not so we do b let's close the bracket then let's close the let okay so you can see that we have you know this and ong okay now we may have duplicates right like i tested or i showed you when i added a g here so you can see that huh? so what you now need to do is you need to put a unique right so that unique can help you strip out you know um the duplicates okay so but the only thing here of course you can see that even you have a blank array a blank you know uh, text there that's going to also come out as it's also a unique item <laughs> you know at the end of the day so <laughs> anyway <laughs> that that's that okay so you have this okay so the good thing is that when you have this you want to then concatenate them text join can get this done and good thing is text join has an argument that allows you to ignore blanks okay so what i'm going to do is layer over this a text join because i want to glue them back together my delimiter as you can see from the expressions that you have here should be a comma and a space so i can do comma space okay and then when it says here ignore empty cells i say yes one and i put a comma so that way you know that empty would not show up okay so now i think the text join is closed let is closed now we have ong let's take this down see that we have okay looks like it's fine let me see okay excellent so we we really have a formula you know that already works the only thing we want to do at this stage is that the formula as written is just in one cell and dragged to other cells right you want to write it in a way like i said it's not a requirement but that's what i do you know i want to write it in one cell and have it spill to the others it's very easy and if you watch a couple of my videos you already know how to approach this this is just using the map this is just saying take these elements and this whole expression i've written is just the transformation that needs to occur meaning that apply this formula that we've written here to each of these cells that's what the map function does map function takes 
you know, a particular array, and then there's a calculation that is applied to every element, and it gives you that result. So what I'm going to do here is this. I'm just going to come here before the let and say map, and then select the entire thing here as my array. Okay. I go into it. I use a lambda. Then I create a variable. I call that variable maybe x. What x is going to be, as I always think about it, and I've said this so many times, I'm now sounding like a broken record. X is like an iterator for me. You know, x would go from element to element, okay? And at every point, x will represent a2, first of all. It will then represent a3, represent a4, and it will perform this whole calculation. If you look at this calculation as written, it's referencing a2 or a2 there, right? Okay, so we just change all those A2s to X's so that this can work more freely, right? So X will represent A2 to give a result. It will then go represent A3, give a result. So it's just performing the same calculation for all these uh, cells. So now we need to then finish up our brackets. We need one bracket for the lambda. We need another bracket for the map. We are good. We have a spill error because of this data here. Delete them. And now we have a result okay so if you actually still put maybe a g here you know it's not going to show up right because it's going to strip it out but let's make another variable um, another character duplicates let's say k so we add a k there all right so you see now that you have a k in your results that's the idea and that's how you know you want to write your formula in such a way that it's dynamic and it can respond you know to uh, changes in your data set and like i say in most of my videos if you make this an excel table then it's just perfect that way if you even add more cities you know the results is dynamic and spills okay so i hope you've enjoyed you know this breakdown and like i said at the beginning of this series formula solutions may not always be mine i try to give of course the credit to who needs to receive it as much as possible but i'm just trying to you know break down what i may consider one of the most elegant you know ways to solve it there are so many ways to solving this problem so you can also post your solutions in the comment section i mean i can solve this in more than one way too but you know if i have to demonstrate all the solutions then <laughs> we'll have an infinitely long video so i hope you like this uh, formula breakdown video Please do hit the like button and you can also subscribe to the channel Excel Moments. So for now, I'm out.